Welcome to hole number one of the Scotland Nine Hole Cup. Set up here with an extra mile and a kingmaker. You don't need that big of a ball. Four and a half top, even one bar of left spin here with like a navigator would be just fine. In this video, I've got a lot of different club levels and different balls. You're going to see basic balls and EM5s and everything. Just keep in mind this guide and a little half a ball or a quarter ball of left curl this guide, especially for this tournament, I have examples from many different levels. So you have to kind of adapt it to your clubs and your balls and your skill level. But I'm going to show you the roots, the methods and the techniques that you're going to need to go low on this old and kind of difficult course choices or two courses. So you can see with the thorn here, we're very close to min. Um, and because of the headwind, I play this one at 10% mid giving it a couple of bars of backspin you probably could have gone with a full three bars here you'll see it comes in a little bit hot but it gets there nonetheless so you know setting it up here i like to bounce with that thorn on the green when i can because it's a nice flat landing position you know you could play it on the fairway in front or onto the fringe you know whatever you prefer there's lots of ways that you can set these shots up and i know this looks to be very uphill but the way that it plays in this wind angle is definitely with that 10% mid. All right, so hole one, once again, this one's a little bit more aggressive. I'm trying it with a low level ball, not quite enough reach. I got that extra mile and four power four ball. Eh, you know, you could probably play it with that, but I decide here to get out the big ball, go with the Zerg and give us, give us the reach that we really do need. And you'll see here, this extra mile seven. So if you have a low level EM, this kind of advanced shot might not be sufficient. I recognize that I did not adjust the power ball number in my app there, but nonetheless, roughly 10% max here. I do push it up, which I didn't think I needed to do, but you'll see where this ball lands, which is in beautiful position. About a 50% overpower and like a full ball of right curl. And if you get this one lined up just right, of course, these shots, you want to practice them first before going live with any of these shots. Okay, so lands beautifully, clips that rough, rolls out. You know you can get the eagle from here. If you've got the right wind condition, this is going to be a very valuable shot to have in your bag. Now, second shot here, you'll see I've got the end bringer roughly at max, excuse me, mid distance here. So 20% mid with that end bringer. You don't need to use any spin at all. And again, do I change the app numbers? We shall see. Come on now. Yeah, 20%. So roughly 2.2 rings should be the pull here. And with a nice straight tailwind, you know we're going to be starting this off with an eagle. Um, I think there's going to be like five different holes in this video that I'm going to show you at different routes and different paths to play because these old holes have so many options, so many ways to get in the hole. Hole number two, this part five, once you get the elevation dialed in that second shot, it's a great chance for Alvi. Two top and one right here with a Titan and an extra mile. And you'll see that I've got that ball guy just going down the middle of the fairway. I'm not looking for crazy distance here. Just good positioning on this shot. I've got just a tiny little bit of the blue ring uh, clipping out into the fairway there. Half a ball of right curl. I don't think there's any overpower, maybe a tick or something, nothing intentional. It's not about massive distance on this shot. It's really about being in position for that second shot. So as you can see, this one rolls up nicely to the end here. And yeah, in a high level play, you know, you can get it down to that next fairway. But from the front tee, that's not really an option for most players. Now from Max Sniper, as you can see here, now, these days, I would have set that up right at max, but I got a little bit of headwind, so we have to pull back a few rings. I'm going to end up playing this with about 0.5 bars of topspin and a 10% max. The elevation here is absolutely debatable. This is kind of like the baseline number that I would start with. Um, you know, it could be anywhere from like minus 10 up to 20%. This shot can play, you know, it just depends. But once we find that number and you get this set up, this hole is actually going to be one of the better opportunities for a good drop here on the course. So I think you're going to want to start strong in this tournament. Hole one, hole two, they're good chances because there's some tough ones coming up. Uh, and some of the par fives, you'll just be happy to get an eagle on. So take your looks when you can. This one comes in okay. Needed a bit more here, but this is the way to get there and get close. Hole number three, this is an interesting par four. I think playing here with a big topper and especially a kingmaker because you want to have that side spin and as much distance on the setup as possible. Lower level big toppers, you might have to find yourself laying up here instead. So setting it up at max, I'm playing this one with 7.5 bars of top spin, three bars of left spin. I do have that yellow ring just clipping into the rough max left curl and you do need to hit perfect on a shot like this. 
that's for darn sure. And what this is going to do, especially if you have Tailwind, you can get this one to not clip the rough on this second bounce right there. You can have this one all the way on the green. I had an example of it, but I think this is more realistic. And you'll see then we're set here from 335. From that distance, you get a nice wedge to the pin. And, well, so the green. You're going to see then how kind of glitchy. Look how glitchy it is. Watch. Little glitch. It kind of glitches back and forth. Um, I knew where to set this one up, so I didn't play with it, so to speak. But a lot of these older courses do have some glitchy greens. So I think that's something you're going to hear about during the tournament this week. That's for darn sure. We're at approximately um, max to mid, depending on the distance of your drive here. You always want to play that endbringer rule accordingly. Zero spin on the shot. And, you know, you'll see me play a couple, well, at least one Firefly shot. I'm always going to recommend the Endbringer because it's just been so good to me. Get in the hole. Now I'm going to show you an aggressive play here. All right. So this setup was given to me by one of my viewers live during the stream. I remember that very clearly. We're going to set up here with four and a half top, two bars of left spin. The top right of that yellow ring is going to be just about touching those little pink bushes. And you see that there. Yeah, so we're going to do that. Now, I should have done a 10% max, but because we're in overpower, excuse me, headwind, max overpower, max left curl, and you're going to give it the full max left hook. And you'll see here, the end result is going to be very similar to the big topper shot that we just did. It actually comes in a little bit shorter, but otherwise you have to lay it up on that first fairway. And then you really don't have much of a chance for the second shot. But from here, we still have a nice wedge now this is where i meant the firefly it's a level one so cut me some slack on this one it's missing a little bit of ball guide i do end up using a bit of topspin here because we are a little ways back you certainly could play the thorn backspin shot on the green like you know roughly 10 percent max max back something like that you know this is what i meant at the beginning of the video i'm going to show you lots of ways and you're going to have to find the way that suits you and your play style best but ultimately, I think there's some really good opportunities to get this one very close and still get that eagle even in a strong headwind. Hole number four, this first technique, it's, um, I don't know, it's interesting. I wanted to include it because if anything, it's original. Four and a half bars of backspin, two bars of left spin. We're setting up with the EM and a Titan ball here. And you can see that we're doing a rough bump to this little small fairway in the middle. Now, I don't really like this hole to begin with, and I will show you a little more conventional method the second way through here. But this is something that I think if you get the second shot dialed in, could definitely give you a better chance for the albatross, um, even better than the right-hand side, which we'll talk about in a minute. But as you can see, just clip it out just gently into here. Now, it's no guarantee to get this one to sit down. You kind of have to have good wind and good practice. Second shot, I think you'll see what I mean, though, by it being a reasonable opportunity. The wind is a bit rough here, so it makes it a bit more difficult to get a clean setup. I play it with anywhere between, you know, zero to one bar of backspin, um, and I got a one bar of left spin here, just to get that ball guide to trickle nicely down to the hole and give us, you know, a pretty decent look at it. I make my 10% max adjustment back before I had any of those, you know, grids on my screen. And you'll see I have to pull it into overpower here because I was set up too close to the max line. So make sure to try to hit perfect anyway. Ooh, just about. And this one should, should still come in very, very nicely. It gives it a clean look to the green, very straightforward. But that first shot can be a bit finicky. So something to consider puts us close. Now, hole number four, once again, I'm showing you where you would set up with a with a big topper and max topspin to do a little rough bump out onto the fairway over the water. Even then, if you're not enough to the right and far enough up, you could still be blocked by trees over there. I'm not a massive fan of that shot, and I decide to just go over here to the left-hand side, not because I didn't have a big topper in my bag. I go here with just one bar of topspin, two bars of right spin. That red ring is very close to the left rough, and I make sure that my second bounce is on the fairway. So this is a tight drive. This is the kind of hole you really just need to get your eagle. Don't sweat too much about dialing in an albi here. Do that on the first par five. Perfect away. I gave it a tick of right cur a left, left curl just to kind of compensate for the wind and make sure that we thread that gap nicely. But this will put us in a very good position. And something to consider, I could play a horizon shot here. It's got a bit more distance compared to my lower level sniper. And, you know, that uh, would give me a bit of an easier shot 
um, you know, to get it a little bit closer without having to use a touch of overpower here. So I end up using like three and a half top, two bars of right spin. If I could have played like five to six top spin uh, and two, two right spin, we probably wouldn't have had to use any overpower. A little bit of right curl just because I felt like it. And I think if I'd taken that right curl away, this one could have even dropped from this position. You'd be the judge. Comes in very nicely. There could be a bit of a funnel in from the top of that green here, but just get it to the green in two, get the darn eagle, and get the heck out of here. Hole number five, we're going to take a look at it from the left side first. You'll see that that wind is coming in from left to right, which will give us a half decent wind angle on the second shot. I recommend at least a navigator here. Cut that wind down. Of course, 1.4 is no threat, but in the tournament, it would be a bit more helpful. Um, like I said, four and a half top. You could add one right spin here if you had a side spin on your ball and do hit perfect. I just line it up with the center of the ball guide just down the middle of the fairway between that bunker on the left and the rough on the right. And this one is a very consistent second shot usually because you can see how flat this one actually comes in. Second shot, I play with the thorn here, 10% mid distance. And you're gonna play anywhere from like zero back to two bars of backspin. I tend to normally play a thorn shot with two bars of backspin. I think I played this one with no spin. Uh, it's no crime. I know uh, our good friend Tommy likes to do that, but you know whatever works for you is really the message of this video. I want you to have the, the idea of how to play the course and some really good general notes that you can get started with. Oh, speaking of notes, if you check my website, erlickgaming.com, you can get free notes based on this video that you can use in the tournament and tweak according to the wins and use them for your success. So keep that in mind, always for free, get in the hole. Now we'll play it from the right side. All right, so hole number five once again, and some people do like to try to send this one all the way to the green, but there's a bunker and a bunch of rough there. I was looking at it. It gives you an idea of what you might do if that's your thing, but I just don't really think it's practical for my style of play. I ended up choosing a katana here. I don't know why. You do, don't need to go with such a powerful ball. I think the navigator is more than enough. Give this one max top, like four and a half, um, maybe even just four bars of top spin and about one bar or two bars of left spin, whatever you've got. You can always compensate with a little bit of curl if you think you need to, but stay away from that bunker. Okay, it's absolutely in play. I did have the top of the red ring at the top of the rough here, 10% max on the shot. So get that one up and over. Comes in very, very nicely. Lots of room to work with here. Second shot, just like on the left side, we're going to play it with the thorn. So, and I know I don't have the power ball setting, so I do for the Katana, so that's fine. I'm just thinking the Navigator in my head. So got that Thorn set up. I think I give this one three back on this side, well, two, um, but I maybe could have gone with three. It's uh, either way, you want to just line it up according to your landing position because the backspin is really just the backspin, and then you're going to set your shot up accordingly. And, you know, there's enough room here. We could play it with five back or one back or none. Um, whatever you really prefer. I'm not trying to be the boss of you. I'm just trying to help you have a good idea how to play these old holes. I know some of you have, might not even have played these courses, and I'm just trying to give you a really good overview so that you can come into the tournament prepared, ready to win, hitting perfect, and of course, getting it in the hole. Hole number six. This is easily one of the hardest holes of the tournament. If you don't have big clubs, you're going to have to play conservatively. And this is why I'm showing you this low level example. I've got a basic ball, bring a Marlin, okay? And four or four and a half bars of topspin if you've got it. And we're really just trying to thread the gap here on the fairway and get it down there as much as you can. I give it a click of overpower and like a half to three quarters of a ball of left curl. Now, I probably could have used a bit more left curl, but that's just barely enough Anywhere down here should be just fine. It doesn't really matter the yardage because we're going to lay up the second shot as well. Now, I've got the Viper in this example. You could use a sniper. You could use a hammerhead. You could use whatever the heck you've got. I'm really just getting it to the end of the second fairway here. And we're going to play a third shot with the Thorn. So 10% max. I give it like a bar and a half of topspin here. Um, I'm probably going to give it some right curl. And if I don't, it'll be fine. Oh, I remember I don't give it right curl when, oh yeah, I do. Um, just about a quarter or so of, of right curl. Probably should have given it some more. You're going to see how close this one comes to the left fairway. It looks like it's in the rough, um, but believe it, it stayed in the fairway somehow. 
those advanced graphics. I don't use those now because you can get much closer adjustments. So the third shot here, it's either negative five or negative 10%, depending on the wind here. I'm gonna give it, I think seven and a half bars of backspin because there's not a lot of room to work with there. And I am landing it nicely on the fairway. And right at the pin with that thorn, this should give you a decent chance for Eagle. It's not a guarantee. You know, there's nothing in Golf Clash that's a guarantee, but it really is a very reasonable way to play it. Like I said, it's an uphill shot here and it does play uphill, negative five or negative 10, mid, hit perfect. And I really hope you get the Eagle on this hole and then just get the heck out of here. All right, so hole six again. This one is if you have a little bit better level clubs and you're a bit more interested in some risk. I play that with four and a half top, three bars of left spin. That three bars of left spin is important. I do recommend you bring a Kingmaker if you're gonna play this shot. I've also got that left ring on the left rough. So you gotta be hitting perfect here. You notice I pulled into overpower a little bit. I give it a little bit of overpower to compensate for that. No curl on this shot. Just trying to get it where I'm aiming. Perfect away. That's how you have to play here. And this one should come in quite nicely. First bounce, still close, close, close. Clipping it. It's gonna be at the end there. Either way, you're gonna play the second shot the same way. Second shot with a long one. Bring your big dog and you're gonna be using basically max topspin here. I give it seven bars of topspin and two bars of right spin. I think it's like two and a half, I guess, is what we actually end up with. And right there, just between that dark rough and the bunker with the second bounce rough bump. You see how this is a bit sketchy, but you'll see on the outcome of the shot that this is a viable way to play. Horizon is another good club to play here. Um, again, both those clubs, Big Dog and a Horizon, you have to hit perfect for them to be viable. Oh, and we're going to use almost maximum overpower. So again, this is super risky play here. I, I'm telling you, this hole is a bit of a pain. Just get your eagle here. Get the heck out of here. I know that looks close, but don't don't be playing around. Just just get your eagle and let's go to hole seven. Hole number seven, I'm showing you the like logical play here. This is the smart play, okay? That's three bars of top spin, two bars of side spin to the right. I don't wanna hear about it in the comments, how many bars of side spin you see. This is older footage get over it okay i love you okay so 10 percent max here on the setup and we're at max distance and you can see that second bounce is going to be into the rough okay and it can bounce past the rough um but not too far past because you don't want to go over that uh, last fairway i did push it up there probably didn't have to click of overpower and i'm using half a ball of right curl here hit perfect and you'll see this one is going to come in very, very nicely. I think this is the practical way to play here, okay? So once, twice, beautiful greenside shot. And I mean, you know what to do from here. I'm still going to show you the wedge play. Um, I think it's a firefly for this example here. Yeah, so I got the firefly. Now this green, this green has definitely given me the shaft a couple times in the past. You think you've got it set up perfectly and it'll come up short. Some of these old courses, I'm telling you, they have some real glitchy spots that can be a pain. So don't be a victim to the glitch. Make sure these shots are gonna work for you. Use some practice tokens before you go live. I get this one set up. 20% mid with the end bringer, no spin is what I would recommend. I don't recommend this top spin shot on the fringe all the way down. Yeah, it worked, but just be careful. Hole number seven. Now, this shot is the one that everybody seems obsessed with trying. I find it very difficult to execute unless you have perfect conditions. Four and a half top, two bars of left spin. I definitely should have played a Zerk here. It would have made things much, much easier. What I'm doing here is basically just going to grip it and rip it and try to get this one to hit the rough and roll out onto the green. If I had given it a bit less top spin or a little bit less overpower, then I do think I would have achieved that objective. Or if I'd played the Zerk, I wouldn't have needed to go max overpower. I missed the big rough, rolled a little bit too hot, but just about this is the way that basically everybody's probably going to try to play anyway. Hole eight, yet again, another par five where the objective for me from the front tee is just to get the eagle. Two top two left i'm playing three but i think two to two and a half here in general is going to be a smart play you don't need a lot of distance don't need to flirt with that bunker at the end and here set it up with half the red ring on the left why have that yellow ring touching the rough i'll never know 
you do you boo it's okay just a little half a ball of left curl here we're just trying to get this one over the water into the middle middle half of the fairway here and set ourselves up for a nice second shot so that's it just slow it down slow it down slow it take it easy you don't have to go quite that far but when you do you give yourself a nice angle on the second shot if you want bring a kingmaker here it'll give you a bit more side spin for this second shot two top two left just like the drive and you should be just fine playing both shots at 10 percent max my objective here is just to get the ball onto the green there's that bunker right behind it ask me how i know about it i've been there more than once and uh, i don't want you to be there okay this is not a hero play i mean again if you've got really high level apoc you want to do a power hook on the drive go for it all the power to you maybe i'll come stop by your stream and i'll hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to your channel like you should do right now if you're enjoying the video but hey good luck on hole eight we'll see you on number nine Hole number nine, ending the tournament uncharacteristically here on a par four. Setting up with that Titan and the extra mile. I'm going to play one bar of left spin and four and a half of top, but I think four bars of top spin is more than enough. In fact, you could probably just play three and come away with this one just fine. But four top, one left would be my official recommendation on this drive. And I understand you can play this on the right-hand side and get it further down that middle fairway, but... I don't actually think that the second shot is better. I think it's actually much, much worse. I've had a lot of consistency here on the left-hand side, and you'll see me playing this way all the time from the front tee. So bouncing it once, twice, rolling it very far down this second fairway. That's why I'm saying four top should be more than enough. So you're setting up then with second shot with your favorite long iron. Mine tends to be the backbone. And you'll see that we're a little closer to min, but I do play this one with mid distance numbers. Playing that with five bars of backspin, two bars of right spin, and I've got this one pretty darn close to the pin. There's a funny slope in this green. Sometimes you really have to favor the right side of the cup. But fortunately, in this example, I do have wind that's working in our favor. And again, these notes, guys, are designed to give you a general overview of all of the holes and get you ready to play in what I think will end up being a pretty tough nine hole cup. Don't spend everything. It's a nine hole. Have some fun. Come by the stream and just enjoy the game. I enjoy hanging out with you guys. I appreciate your time. Thank you for watching. And we'll see you out on the course. Good luck.